Hello. Welcome to our webinar today. Um, we're talking about how contact centers can maximize sales success in an unpredictable market. So just before we get started, we'll just give people a couple more minutes to join. And we'll move on to housekeeping things. So before we go through our intros of who's joined us today, um, we have got a Q&A panel available for everyone to use. Please feel free to reach out via that panel. We'll, uh, um, sp oh, sorry, um, we've got some time at the end of the webinar to actually go through any questions that you might, might have. And we're also recording the session, so we will send it out afterwards as well. So if you have to drop off for whatever reason, don't worry, you're not missing out. Uh, we'll share the link in a follow-up email. Um, so before we move on to introducing uh, Tom and Richard, you may notice that we've had a slight change of plan in the agenda. Um, so Howard and Ben Wood were meant to be joining us, but today we are joined by Tom McGarry and Richard Coward. So just a slight change in uh, personnel there, but um, it, the webinar will still be just as good, don't worry. Um, so I'll move on to intros. So I'm Kaylee Tate, I'm Head of Marketing at Max Contact. Um, I've been with Max Contact now almost three years um, and have spent many years in the tech space um, working with um, sales and marketing teams to generate revenue, um, increase customer satisfaction, and really help organizations achieve efficient growth. Um, so I've got a lot of thoughts on this subject um, that we're about to delve into a, a little bit further. And I'll intro Rich. So um, many existing customers will know the two faces on the screen. So Richard um, has started the business and co-founded it with um, Ben Booth. Um, and Richard has been in sales leadership roles, actually worked in contact centers when he started out in his first, I think it was his first ever job, um, but has held sales leadership roles for over 20 years now um, and has more recently moved into a strategic partnership and enterprise director role at Max Contact. So heaps of experience that we can uh, lean on. Um, so looking forward to asking Rich questions. Um, and then we have Tom McGarry. So Tom has held various um, roles at Max Contact. He is head of implementations now. So has worked with loads of different organizations, different industries, helping them with um, implementing our technology, but also how their sales teams can drive performance and efficiency through the use of great technology like Max Contact. So thank you both for joining us. Um, so just to set the scene of why I suppose this webinar was an important topic for us. So we know that the uh, sales landscape over the past year has been a really difficult landscape to be operating in. Um, there's been economic pressures in things like inflation has really impacted how businesses have been buying and, and consumers have been buying as well. Um, so uh, a lot of research out there has pointed to the fact that sales is much more difficult now. Um, 2023, it's been, a, it was a difficult period. And the, the question I suppose we're, we're all asking is, is the light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, but we know that 54% of sales leaders said that selling was harder in 2023 than before. Um, so really, let's start with the questions and um, chat to Rich. So Richard, what trends are we seeing across the industry for outbound sales in 2024? I think there's um, three key trends which we are seeing across outbound sales, and this is regardless of the industry or, or use case. Uh, the first is probably the need to drive efficiency within um, within the sales teams. This is obviously driven by the current economical climate. Um, everyone is asked to be doing more with less resources and less budget. So this has forced everyone to, to look at processes and see where they can use AI to remove repetitive tasks or deliver automation, whether it's through purposeful messaging, sales enablement tools, or quality assurance processes through tools such as speech analytics. I think the second trend that we um, are seeing is everyone is now uh, wanting to use uh, more data to drive decision making. So 
data is becoming more important to organizations, but it's how they harvest that data to provide accurate insight. This differentiates the, the best companies from the rest. And whether this is to maximize uh, their strategy or provide insight to the senior leadership teams on why certain decisions should be made. Selling has also moved from more a transactional selling to a relationship selling. This is, change is really being driven by lots of competition in, the, in every market. Um, and to use a, a common phrase, people buy from people. So building these release relationships with individuals, but also a brand helps provide a key differential. And then using the data and insight to tailor those outreach campaigns um, by providing those personalized messages with content which resonates with companies and individuals uh, is helping to put the brakes on those continuously decreasing conversion rates. And I'd say the third key trend is um, that we're that we're seeing is people are, are harder to get hold of. Connect and contact rates have uh, become more challenging. Um, following the introduction of GDPR, uh, data is obviously more limited, which um, the introduction of GDPR changed the kind of outbound outreach campaigns forever. With COVID then following less than two years later, um, this changed the world that, again, that we lived in with the, the introduction of remote and more recently hybrid working. So previously, where everyone's understanding of what the best time to, to call and do these outreach campaigns uh, for specific individuals or businesses has become even more difficult now to, to get right. So we've seen that a lot of this has led to organizations um, trying to implement different contact strategies using different interaction channels, such as SMS or WhatsApp. Um, and this has enabled customers to interact at a time that, that suits them, but also on their preferred contact method. Yeah. So it's good that we're, I suppose, there are opportunities there to improve and overcome some of these challenges. Um, what are the, the sales leadership challenges that were seen in the contact center for sales leaders um, in the space? I'd say one of the one of the big challenges is is that new way of the the hybrid world with advisors sometimes working in the office, sometimes working remotely. A lot of sales leaders are, are struggling to manage those sales teams, so you can no longer see um, the team's body language, or you can't grab them in between between calls. And now relying on messaging apps such as Teams or Slack, or having to schedule calls to to have that interaction time with Teams on a either group basis or, or or an individual basis, which has, has thrown up lots of challenges, which maybe um, would uh, in person be solved very quickly there and then they're ha having to maybe drag those out for hours or and, until later, later on in the day. Um, I'd say one of the other challenges is um, a salesperson's skill set and knowledge is, is continually changing. So in the current economical climate, most companies are now having to diversify their portfolio by offering a range of products and services, which means the, the pressure on advisors to expand um, their knowledge to multiple products and services is increasing. Training is obviously a, a, an expensive cost, but it's also uh, essential really to ensure that advisors are, are skilled and are, are able to perform the role that's been employed for. But by reducing the time period from when an advisor starts their employment to when they hit the phones, um, they then become um, turned from being a, a cost of the business to a revenue revenue generating employee much quicker. We've seen a lot of um, phasing of the the training over a longer period of time. So um, they're, they're not trained on all products from from day one. They're trained on various products over over a longer period of time, rather than trying to squeeze all product and all portfolio knowledge into a very intensive induction training. So it, we've seen it's actually the advisors absorb, absorb the knowledge to a much deeper level and become more proficient across the whole portfolio much quicker. Yeah, so that trying to do more with less um, is Definitely. absolutely resonating throughout all of those um, points there. So. How, what would be your recommendations on improving sales teams' efficiency and performance? What do you think um, has worked? I think getting your inputs um, from from your actual team on what they think will help. They're they're the ones doing the job day in day out. They know the challenges in processes and procedures. Um, if they're involved in the process, you you get the buy-in from them adopting the change, whether this is to be 
through a change in process or the implementation of a, a new technology which solves the challenges that they've identified. Um, adoption of any form of change is quicker and smoother if everyone's brought into it and they and they feel involved. Um, I think the the next point um, is is more relating to that building a, a culture of coaching and learning um, by using the insight and data to form part of coaching sessions means that coaching becomes more effective, delivers better outcomes. Most people are, are keen to learn. Um, I know I personally introduced a, a sales book club for, for our sales team, and I don't think I've personally ever not read a book where I didn't learn something new. Um, and although most of the team, they, they knew the content, uh, they'd read it in the past or they've been on training course before about it, a lot of times they, they fall into bad habits or they stop doing the things that they used to do. Um, and by by make, making them a, a reapproach their um, and look at their methods of how how they've been um, selling or how the building relationships or that or that rapport um, actually has um, changed the behaviors back to how they previously were doing, which has, has seen an increase in, in in performance. And I think that the, the final um, recommendation is more about getting to know your team, having the knowledge of your team skills, interests, what task they enjoy, maximizes their output if they're happy workers, the productive workers. Um, and when you, you're matching not only um, the needs of the business, but also to their strengths, really does uh, have a, a massive impact on uh, performance and um, productivity. Yeah, completely agree. Um, so that is really the, the crux of what has helped drive some product innovation within the Max Contact platform as well. So um, in the backdrop of a really difficult sales environment over the past 18, 12 months, should we say, um, really knowing how your sales team's skills and they're, they're, they're really where they're proficient and using that in the best way possible really helps build a more effective sales team. So um, we built Outbound Skills a base routine and Tom um, is going to take us through that so you can see how that works. Um, but really it's so that we can build connections quickly, increase call success rates by making sure that customers are paired with you, the right person in your teams so that you can get better outcomes from those conversations, whether that's a sale or just happier customers, whatever it may be. Um, so I'll hand over now to Tom. Hi everybody, I'll just share my screen. I've got some slides to work through. Okay, so as Kaylee said, I have been asked to just talk around the outbound skill based routine feature that we've been developing recently. So, what is the feature? So, the feature is basically it allows us to route customers to the best suited users based on the skills that you can assign to your agents. So, the aim of this is to get the lead addressed by the right people in your team and to keep the customers happy and improve that relationship that Richard was talking about before. So, just carry on through here. So, what are the benefits? of outbound skill-based routing. The idea is it's gonna make your life easier. As an admin, instead of having to create multiple campaigns, multiple lists, you can consolidate those campaigns and lists into lesser. It also, it's easy to build your dashboards and your reporting. So you can see the live stats instead of having to spread it out across several different campaigns, you can consolidate all of that. So it makes your admin time a lot easier. Based on that, it will also help to reduce your human error. So if you are creating less, you're building less, there is less chance for you to make a mistake, which we all do because we're all human and it happens. At the same time, having those less campaigns and those less fewer number of lists allow the agents to focus on what they need to do. They need to log into the one campaign and they will get the calls that they need instead of asking them to log into a different campaign for an hour, move over here, move over there. It's better to let them focus, just let them log on and concentrate on the one campaign. And the overall goal is to improve your customer relationships, as Richard was saying. If you're putting through the right people to the right people on the other side, that's going to make your customers happier. And it's also going to let your goals become easier to achieve effectively. As Richard said, it's getting harder to get in touch with people. So when you do get in touch with them, you want to give yourself the strongest start. So you can connect the right people to the right places. So 
couple of examples of how this could work in kind of a sales environment. You want to connect the, the customer to the user that has the highest probability of converting the sale. You play into the users, your agent strengths to make sure that they're in the best place to make the sale. It's also going to boost your overall team conversion rates as well. In a debt collection environment, there's different approaches, knowledge very significantly across the base. Um, you want to put the calls through to people who are skilled in negotiation or have the relevant knowledge about the relevant regulations. And again, that's going to improve your goals and your targets. And then another kind of very basic aspect that's kind of across the client base is your new starters. So you've got new starters on the system. You want to expose them to calls, but you don't want to maybe have that affect your revenue targets. So using this, you can assign skills to established users and make sure that they are keeping on the phones, they are getting more calls through to them, while at the same time still exposing your new starters to calls and allowing them to grow as well. So how does it work? On the Mats Contact system, you can now create skill groups, which are a combination of individual skills, which you can assign to users. Okay, And those skills could be they are proficient in certain features, certain products knowledge, and they may have regulation knowledge that you need to focus on a certain call. Little diagram here, but essentially you assign the skills to the agents. You also assign the, assign the skills to the data that you import as well. And when the calls are made, the system will match the agent, the correct agent with the correct customer. So I have a little bit of a demo to work through which is on our demo platform. Here we go. So I'm just going to kind of take you through it and show you how to set this up and how kind of straightforward it is and, and what we can do with the system. So on our demo system and in the future on your systems, we have a new option here for outbound skills. So this is where you create the skills for your users to use. So if I jump to a tab that I've opened earlier, you can see here we've got some sample skills already. And there is very little to the skill itself. It's literally just a just a skill name, a description. That's all you would need. If I was to create a new one, I can go up here and give it a skill. So your skills will vary depending on what kind of industry you're in. If I was to put one, again, just looking around myself, I'm an Apple guy. I like my iPhone. So as a user, I would have the Apple skill. Or as I would tell myself, I do I can then save that and that will then go as a new skill down here. Now at the moment, it's not been added to any groups. So a group is a collection of skills that we would assign to your data or to your agent as well. The tab up here is your skill groups. And from here, if I click on a group, so product knowledge, for example, I can then add in any of the skills that I've created. Once you do this, this does not require a save. This is live and effective straight away. Agents don't have to log out of campaigns it's good to go straight away. So once you've got those skills and those collection of skills, how do you assign those to the actual users that you have? So there's a couple of different ways we can do it. The first one is on our user section, where we, our administrator page, basically, where we create the users on the system. So you can see here, we've got multiple users. If I find my user, we have a new tab on here for skills. So this is where you can, apply the actual skill to the user itself. Now you may have also noticed here, we have proficiency levels. So these are skill levels within the skill. So higher is better. That means the higher proficiency level you have, the more skilled you would be in that skill. So this is a way to prioritize users with the same skill. So if we have two, two users that have the product knowledge skill, one of them may still have more product knowledge. So we can prioritize users in that way. Now, the other way to add skills is through the user plans. Now you may have noticed on the first page, we have a user plan setting there. The user plan to this date has been used for your capacity on your interaction campaigns. So how many emails, web chats, how many interactions can a, an agent take at once? It's also set there for dynamic nail up settings we can set. But we have added the availability of user skills as well. So this is in the settings and on your plans page. On the user plans, as well as the settings I've just mentioned, you've also got the ability to add skills and add proficiencies there as well. If a user does use that plan, 
they would inherit the skills. So you can see here the guide example skill and the debt collection skill I have inherited from the user plan. So it's an easier way to add skills en masse to different users. And then if you need to make any dynamic changes, you can add the individual skills as well, if you want to. Okay, so now the skills are assigned to our users. How do we add those to actual imports? So the data that you import, we've added basically one setting. So it's very simple, very easy to use. And it's on the import page. On your second page with your main settings, we have a new skill group icon, or drop down, where you can assign a skill group to the data you import which means once, it's, once that data is imported, all the skills within that group are applied to that data. And that's effectively it. That's how you would add your, your skill groups to your data. The rest of the import process is as normal. And we can also do this on the API imports as well using the template mapping page. So um, the last bit of the demo I have is effectively once the data is in, and it's being called, it's being matched to the correct individuals. So you've got the be best chance of making that sale, making that conversion your target. What we can also do, and a new feature we've added, is on the result code section. So on the result code, at the end of a call, when you disposition the call, obviously your result codes have different um, criteria. So do they recall? Do they not recall? Um, what kind of status do we apply to the call? What we've also added is a new skill group icon. So if you want to, you're able to set certain result codes, certain dispositions to change the skill group. So as an example, if a sale has been made, you may then switch that skill to an aftercare skill. And therefore, you want your aftercare users to pick up the next call that's made to the user. So that is effectively what the, what the drop down is there for. If you select none, that would just keep the existing skill groups that we have on that data and we carry on. Okay. So Essentially, that would be the, the actual demo for the system. If I just jump back to my slides quickly. Um, the last part of, of my section is when is this available to you guys? So at the moment, it's currently part of our beta program, which means the system, the, the feature is developed. It's live on some of our beta customers that have agreed to kind of use this and feedback to us with any improvements that could be made and what's going well for them, what isn't going well for them. And we take that feedback and we continue to, to develop the feature. Um, the general release is due for quarter two. So this feature is basically coming out of beta at the end of quarter one, and it will begin the wider rollout in quarter two. And then last off and best of all, it's included as your part of your existing feature set. So there was no additional charge for the outbound skill-based routing feature. It will be rolled into your updates as soon as you receive that update at the start of Q2. So if you do, or if you would like to become part of our beta program and you'd like to try it now, please let us know and we can have a look at that and we can kind of enable the feature for you and kind of make you part of our beta group. But if not, as I say, it will be part of your existing upgrade schedule and that'll be part in starting in Q2. Amazing, thanks Tom. No worries, you're welcome. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions. Um, just have a look here. Um, what type of clients would really benefit from the, using this feature? So we've obviously mentioned a few use cases, but is there a specific size of organization? I'd probably say some some larger, so kind of 20 seats upwards would benefit from it. And if you said um, using a lot of a lot of different data types in your in your system. So instead of splitting those between the campaigns and having different agents log on to different campaigns, you can now combine them into kind of the one campaign. And just as long as your skills are set up correctly, the calls will route through to the correct agents without you having to create and manage different different campaigns, different lists. You can consolidate a lot of that. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. And with this um, new approach, then. Does it mean that some agents are going to be potentially sat there, not taking calls, not as productive? No, so as part of the, the algorithm, we basically look at the users that are logged in and look at the skills they have and what skills agents don't have. Mm. And we fetch data accordingly. So we ensure that agents aren't left a long time waiting for data or waiting for calls. Okay. And then we've just got one more, oh, a couple more have come through as well, but... Um, what is the use case of this solution with debt collection, debt on debt collection rates? I think that's 
Yeah, so we, I mean, with in-debt collection, one of the examples was you could use a skill-based routine to maybe put your higher levels of debt through to your more established agents. In, instead of having all the agents accessible for all the data, you could kind of tie the, the more established agents to your higher level of debt. Also, there may be some customers in the past who've had problems paying or maybe difficult to pay. So you might want to put it through to agents who are more skilled in negotiation. So that's a couple of the, the use cases for it. Okay. And then I have a question. Um, I'm not quite sure I'm, uh, I might butcher this one, but are services integral? I'm not sure um, what that one means. Um, from a tech perspective, is that resonating with anyone? It doesn't, I'm afraid. I think we might need some elaboration on that one. Okay, yeah, if you want to drop um, another elaboration and um, question in the yeah. chat. I mean, yeah, the, the only so. thing I will add to that is the, the outbound skill based routing, if, if this is what it means, you don't have to switch it on. You don't have to have all your data have skills. It can be imported as it was anyway, absolutely normal. You can have some data with skill groups applied, some data without, and it will still route to the, the correct agents. Okay. Good. Right. I, th I think that's all for now. Um, Unless there's any more questions, oh, I think we're done. We will be sending a follow-up email with a, a link to this recording. Um, like Tom said, if you do want to find out more or be involved in the beta process of this feature, then please flag it to us via um, our contact details on email or via an account manager as well. Just feel free to reach out um, and then we will notify everyone um, in the future, we have had clarification on that uh, question, actually. Can legal services companies benefit from it, um, benefit from this feature? So if you're in the, the legal sector, I think, is there a way that perhaps this could be used as a use case? I would um, say, yeah, there's there's one use case that we've already got that are working it. So they're working yeah. different, cl different claim types. So if they're getting inquiries from... Um, on websites, for example, if it's about personal injury or accident at work or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. using those um, from a from a legal perspective, they're routing um, rather than splitting all, all the data into different campaigns for the different types of claims. In in, in that um, perspective, they're able to route the um, skills to the most appropriate advisor that's expert in that particular type of um, legal case. Yeah. Is how we've currently seen it, that there's only one current use case in the beta um, cu customers using it, but that's the, the way that they're using it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. It's triggered a, another question, but um, do you have any advice on how organizations measure the proficiency of agents and skills? Like say they have got multiple skills going on. What, what would be your advice on, on doing that? It would probably be from, from the start, it's probably important to have kind of set definitions of your skill levels. So as yeah. we saw before, you can you can set your skill levels on by the user group, by the skill group, but then you can also do it individually. So it's probably best to have a single source of truth maybe and kind of have your skill groups as your main source. And if you do need to make any additions and changes, you can do that through the individual kind of skills applied to the user. So that's what yeah. some of our, our beta customers are doing currently. Yeah. And our customers linking it to coaching and um, like learning and development teams, training teams as well, some way. Yeah, so effectively, once you've got these skills, as we were saying before, it can be used to to tag data with certain, to go through to more established users or lesser established users. So if you do have new starters that do need to learn specific skills, it can be used in that way as well. So you can kind of redirect the data through to them if needs be. Yeah. Okay. And with the proficiency levels as well with the skills, the two users can have the same skill but have very different levels in there. So they can get the – your less established users can pick up these calls only if the more established user is busy or not logged in at the time. So there's still, there's still levels and priorities there. Yeah, okay. So you might have answered this next one already, but – um, does the new skill feature now set the rule across the whole of the campaign? For example, would it take over the current set priority levels or would those levels need to be removed? It would work in conjunction with the, the current levels you have. So we're still 
on a ratio basis, kind of pulling data from different lists. So that can still be done. Um, it does replace the ratios and the priorities on your custom data fetching. So if you were to use custom data fetching, this does kind of supersede it and it does take the data from, from the outbound skill based routing setup. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Tom. And there's one more question. Um, so what if a user has potentially problems affecting their productivity, for instance? Um, could that be managed through the skills somehow? Um, yeah. It could be. I mean, skill, skills could be kind of taken away from the user or at the same time, the levels could be lowered for the mm -hmm. for the skill levels the user has. So if they were struggling with certain certain aspects of the call, maybe they could be deprioritized on those skills and therefore get less of those calls or the opposite way. If they need to get better at them, you can increase their level. So they took more of these calls and were kind of forced to get get, you know, improve the skills on these. Good. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Rich. So I think that opened a mini floodgate of questions, but I think that was the last one. So thank you, everyone. If you do have any more questions that you think of afterwards, then feel free to reach out via that email as well. But thanks, everyone, for your time. Hopefully it was useful. Um, but thanks for taking us through the demo, Tom. And thanks for the chat, Rich. Thanks a lot. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone.